Every gardener knows that compost is black gold. It's what turns tired soil into thriving, nutrient-packed earth. But there's an age-old question that still divides gardeners today. Should you pile your compost on the surface or bury it beneath the soil? For many, tossing scraps into a heap feels easier. But the truth is, burying those kitchen leftovers might just be the single best upgrade you can make for your garden's fertility, pest resistance and long-term soil structure. What we're about to cover isn't theory. It's a proven method that's been used since before modern composting even existed. And once you understand why it works, you'll see why the smartest soil builders are going underground. Surface piles invite chaos, while buried compost builds structure. A traditional compost pile works eventually. But, you know, the exposed layers invite problems that soil doesn't forgive easily. Fruit flies, odours, moisture loss and inconsistent breakdown. On the surface, heat and air exposure accelerate decomposition at first, but also dry out the pile quickly, halting microbial activity. That's why many gardeners find themselves constantly turning, watering and managing piles just to keep them alive. Burying compost scraps, on the other hand, hands the job directly to the soil. Once underground, microbes, fungi and worms take over instantly. The scraps are surrounded by consistent moisture, temperature and the perfect balance of oxygen and carbon. Ah, this environment truly promotes both anaerobic and aerobic decomposition in perfect balance. It results in nutrient-rich humus without the need for constant maintenance. When organic matter breaks down within the soil, its nutrients remain locked right where plants can use them instead of washing away in the rain or drying out in the sunlight. In simple terms, buried compost doesn't just decompose, it integrates. You see, when you bury kitchen waste, you're actually feeding an underground network that never stops working. The soil around your buried scraps is absolutely teeming with bacteria and fungal threads, all eagerly waiting for an energy source. The moment those scraps hit the ground, decomposition begins from every angle. Worms are drawn in by the scent of decay and their burrowing aerates the soil naturally. Quite fascinating, isn't it? As they digest the organic matter, they leave behind castings. Rich, slow-release fertilizer packed with nitrogen, phosphorus and beneficial microbes. The most critical difference between buried compost and surface piles lies in the microbial community. Below the surface you have a stable environment, moist, dark and insulated. That stability allows fungal mycelium to colonize and connect organic material to living root systems. Plants growing above buried compost actually communicate chemically with these fungal networks, drawing nutrients directly into their roots as decomposition unfolds. In other words, when you bury compost, you're not just making fertilizer. You're creating living nutrient bridges between waste and growth. The key to success is, well, balance. You don't want a pit of rotting food. You want a steady conversion of organic matter into humus. So start by digging a trench or hole about 8 to 12 inches deep. This depth keeps odours away and protects against pests while still allowing air to circulate. 
Place your kitchen scraps into the trench. Vegetable peels, coffee grounds, eggshells, and fruit waste work beautifully. Just be sure to avoid large chunks of meat oils or dairy, which decompose far too slowly underground. Once your scraps are laid down, cover them with a mix of soil and dry carbon material like shredded leaves or straw. A good ratio is roughly two parts soil to one part organic waste. This ensures microbial balance and prevents excess moisture buildup. Over a few weeks that buried material will disappear entirely, leaving behind rich, crumbly earth. For continuous composting, you know, the trench method is quite effective. As you harvest or move across your beds, you should bury new compost strips in alternating rows. By the time you return to the first trench, the material will be fully broken down and ready for planting. This approach keeps every part of your garden cycling nutrients evenly, ensuring healthy growth. One of the often overlooked benefits of burying compost is its ability to regulate soil moisture. The decomposing matter acts like a sponge, holding water deep in the root zone and releasing it gradually. This clever method prevents the surface from drying out, reducing the need for frequent watering, which is quite handy. In climates with, let's say, unpredictable rain, this method really shines. As the organic matter breaks down, it improves soil porosity, allowing roots to access both water and air. Gardeners who practice trench composting often report better drought tolerance and fewer compacted soil issues. It's a remarkable technique indeed. The buried material essentially turns each bed into a slow-release reservoir of nutrition and hydration. Over time, your soil transforms into a loamy dark matrix that, you know, really resists erosion and compaction. Plants grown over former compost trenches consistently show stronger root systems and, honestly, more resilient foliage. In a healthy garden bed, earthworms and microorganisms form a complex food web. Burying scraps feeds every level of that network uh, simultaneously. Worms feast on the decaying matter and excrete worm castings, while microbial life multiplies exponentially in the surrounding soil. You see, these microbes, they do more than just feed plants. They actually protect them as well. By colonizing root surfaces, they create this fascinating biological barrier against pathogens. The more active the decomposition zone is, the more resilient your soil ecosystem becomes. It's quite remarkable, really. Now, Here's an interesting thing about roots growing near decomposing trenches. They often extend directly into the humified zone, pulling up nutrients that would have been lost in surface composting. You can actually plan your crop rotation around these zones. For instance, after burying compost in one section, follow up with heavy feeders like tomatoes, squash or corn. They'll tap into the enriched soil while the next trench decomposes elsewhere. It's a clever strategy, don't you think? For backyard gardeners, a rotating trench system is truly ideal. You'd want to divide your garden bed into three sections. One for active burial, one for resting, and one for planting. And then, every month or two, you rotate where you bury new scraps. It's a simple yet effective way to keep your garden thriving. For larger plots or homesteads, try pit composting near fruit trees or perennials. 
dig a circular pit about two feet deep, fill it with alternating layers of scraps and leaves, then seal it with soil. Over time, the buried compost releases nutrients that the tree roots naturally absorb, reducing the need for surface fertilizers. In raised beds, simply dig smaller pockets between plants to bury small amounts of kitchen waste weekly. The decomposition stays localized, minimizing disturbance and maximizing fertility exactly where roots need it. Surface piles have their place, but for gardeners seeking closed-loop fertility and low-maintenance soil health, buried compost systems outperform them every time. They eliminate pests, retain moisture, build microbial diversity, and keep nutrients right where they belong, in the soil, not running off or evaporating. What's most rewarding is that this method works with nature, not against it. The soil itself becomes your composter, your fertilizer factory, and your pest defense system all in one. So next time you finish peeling vegetables or brewing coffee, skip the surface pile. Dig a small trench, feed the earth directly, and let the soil handle the rest. It's the most efficient, natural, and sustainable composting method you'll ever use. If you found this guide useful, make sure to subscribe to Hydrahaven, like this video, and share it with fellow gardeners. Together, we're rebuilding soil the right way, layer by layer, underground, where the real magic happens.